The question is, was she old enough to begin with? A child, not yet a woman, usually in her early teens, swept from her playing fields, forced into marriage in the name of tradition. She's forced with immense social pressure, forcing her to have babies at an early age. Mothers in Ethiopia would have an average of seven children throughout their bearing years. When the time comes for her to give birth, our young mother would be deprived of the proper medical care she desperately needs. Most mothers give birth assisted by traditional birth attendants, let alone getting any follow-up and treatment. The pain and poor medical conditions open her up to other severe complications. If she's lucky, she gets carried by her community members to give birth at a health center. That is, of course, assuming she survives this long and treacherous journey. To her misfortune, she's met with health centers that are under-equipped, understaffed, lack water and electricity services. The survival of her and the child is in the hands of these poor facilities. She'd likely be one of the thousands of mothers that die giving birth each year. If her child was ever to survive, it would usually be stunted, malnourished, and deprived of access to safe drinking water. Orphaned with no mother to nurture them, countless children never make it over the age of five because of diseases like diarrhea, acute respiratory infection, lack of proper vaccination, and many more. For the lucky ones that do, there is unfortunately no happy ending in sight. It's only a matter of time before the community is infected with malaria, a disease so merciless that would claim the lives of countless community members. Devastated and traumatized, the child becomes an adult. Unaware of threats lurking in the cities, they contract HIV. HIV weakens their immune system and opens them up to tuberculosis and other deadly diseases. Challenged by the countless number of different health crises, a single Ethiopian citizen's life expectancy was 45 years or less, one of the lowest at that time. Lives lost means reduced economic productivity. Productivity is further slowed while people are sick or taking care of others. In effect, reducing the economic growth which can affect the GDP of a country. The nation at large becomes weak and unable to fend for itself. How do you save such a nation in a grave crisis? How could a country prosper while its citizens are in poor health conditions? No one can take care of the health of the community better than its people. So we put together all we have and all of our very best and started the community ownership movement, a grassroots approach that allowed us to do more with less by providing health solutions that can be provided on a household level. By introducing the Health Extension Program, we trained and equipped our Health Extension workers, HEWs, an army of determined locals that provide door-to-door -door follow up on the health of the household. Slowly the change was taking effect. We enforced laws against child marriage and other harmful traditions. Family planning programs introduced contraceptives to give mothers the freedom to decide when to have children. This way they can raise their children attentively, lowering the total fertility rate from seven to four per woman. When they did get pregnant, the now 38,000 deployed health extension workers were there to provide medical care before they gave birth. Decreasing maternal mortality by 69%. More infrastructures are being built by the year to make health centers accessible. More than 16,000 new health posts were built to reach rural parts of the country. In effect, child mortality decreased significantly. Mothers were cared for after giving birth. Children got care and attention from their mother. Our nutrition programs ensured that children were strong and happy as they passed their fifth year. Treatment for malaria was accessible for more than 3,500 health centers and 300 hospitals. We distributed millions of mosquito nets, decreasing the total death caused by malaria by 73%. HIV education was rolled out in our school and communities. Our healthier population was more aware of the threats, which plummeted the infection rate of HIV by 90%. We had an increase in detection rate of tuberculosis and treatment success rate became 92%. All these efforts grew the life expectancy of 45 years to 64 years. Citizens live more and do more for their nation. The healthy workforce's contribution to our double-digit economic growth is only a testament of our effort to ensure further successes. 
Ethiopia is now a stronger nation. But there's still a lot to do in delivering equitable, quality health service. We need to make quality health care affordable and accessible for every Ethiopian. We need to train more of our citizens to be health officers and midwives to decrease the maternal mortality rate even more. We need to take care of our citizens suffering from non-communicable diseases. A second generation of health extension workers need to be deployed to cover even the most rural parts of the country, including the pastoralist. Today we have three million model families. We hope to have these model families share their practices to the rest of the 15 million families. Our model families will influence at least five families and inspire them to have their health secured by themselves. When a community is responsible for its own health, then the rest is fine-tuning it. We will establish a medical city in our capital. To make healthcare more accessible for regional inhabitants, we will build high-end hospitals in each region. Our health facilities will be promoted to high-end clinics, and the cycle will go on. By 2020, we will lower maternal mortality. We'll also take under five mortality down by half. HIV incidence rate will be down to 0.01%, while tuberculosis mortality rate will be reduced by 45%. We'll raise life expectancy from 64 years to 69 years. Our vision is a healthy Ethiopia in all policies. Our growing economy has to be green. Our industries have to be eco-friendly. We are the hope of our children and our country. We've come this far only to go further. We are creating a healthy, productive, and prosperous population that will push Ethiopia to a middle-income country and furthermore. After all, healthy citizens are the greatest asset any country can have.